Okay, welcome back to part three of Firestarter Graphics and Engineering lesson on even more solids for SketchUp. In this lesson, we've done a turnbuckle and we've just talked about revolved solids. We're going to talk about the glass box option. Maybe it's not my favorite option to do, but it's an option that works when you're in a bind. Also, more cutting tools, the follow me tool, and auto fold for chamfers. We've gone over this before, and as you can tell in the past videos, it can be quite tricky to get the auto fold to work. Um, so let's kind of review what we have drawn here. Last time we drew, we had a center line right here, and we knew that we had to be a certain distance, so we know our diameter is 0 .308. Oh, I gotta think with this one, inches for this one and if we cut that in half we know our radius from this point to the bottom line of our revolve is going to be whatever this is divided by two and then we just follow the rest of the dimensions some of them we had to figure out by hand or at least I did earlier and put them on here um, and then once we, re we use the follow me tool we revolved it to create this and now what we're going to do is make these cutouts here that make it hollow. Now last time I did this um, in one of the parametric modelers that I use be it Fusion 360 or SolidWorks all I have to do is make these lines right here either by converting this edge to be an entity and constraining everything and then make the cuts however in SketchUp if it's really easy to make this shape, it really is. However, they don't give us enough dimensions on this drawing because this is a SolidWorks or a parametric drawing, which means they only give you enough dimensions to draw a basic shape and then constrain everything else, which in my opinion is poor because not every person uses parametric modeling. <coughs> Excuse me. And when you pass a drawing to a machinist, him looking at this or she looking at this, they're going to have no idea because certain dimensions are missing from uh, edges to edges, placements of holes, etc. So it's kind of a bad design to leave those dimensions out just because the computer program can automatically assume and fix those. It's just a bad way of doing things. So what I had to do, and someone else pointed this out to me because I was, I was so stumped when I had to go to SketchUp to figure this problem out, was we actually drew this pattern and then drilled, let's see, yeah, made the pillbox the way it needed to be, following this shape, and then just lined it up, and there it was, and just made the cut. So we just made like a pill kind of shape. Oh, wait, not, not this shape, sorry. We followed these dimensions that they gave us, but made it entirely like a looks like a pill capsule and then we just cut them across and then we cut this hole out so that's what we're gonna do and then we're going to finish off by making this and then using the follow me path and then we'll just assembly assembly we will assemble the turnbuckle together so let's go ahead and get started now bear in mind it's been like a week since I've used SketchUp it's been it's been a while I just been really busy with other things so let's review. This is what we have. This is our revolved turnbuckle. It is a solid. Let's go to x-ray mode just to make sure. Um, everything looks halfway decent. I like that. And um, whoops. Yep, it does say solid. It does give us some sort of volume. So I'm going to turn off x-ray. Okay, so just a review of key bindings. If you hold shift and middle mouse button, pans. If you let go of shift, it turns into orbit. So, just to review. Let's get started. Let's make our drawing. So we know we have a radius of half an inch, so a one inch diameter circle, but luckily SketchUp uses radii. And then from center point to the other center point of the circle is 2.49 inches. I had to do this by hand because SketchUp does not use constraints and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and start making the drawings real quick and then I'll be right back. So I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on pause. Okay, so I'm back. 
it was just a quick 20 seconds. I'm just trying to save some processing time here and some video time for you guys that I'll be wasting with random speak. Anyway, here's what I did. Drew two circles. You get the idea. Then from the center point to the center point was 2.49, and then two tangent lines. So let's go ahead and erase those. Another way you could have done it is just a rectangle with a width of one inch in the specified length you needed and then draw on your arcs in the inside but no big deal so I'm just gonna lift this up to a specific no not even a specific just a random height and we're going to make sure we can make a component um, call it whatever you want and then I want to um, I wish there was a right click copy component but there isn't okay so, we're going to use the Alt tool, no we're not, we're going to use the Move tool, and then hold Alt, come on, oh it's Control, sorry, not Alt, to make a copy. Like I said, it's been a week. So now we've got these two copies, so now what we need to do is place them right along this in the correct orientation. Now what the glass box option is, is do I have a picture of that? I don't. So, oh, alright, let me just show you. Hit C for circle, and we're going to make it four sides, which obviously we know is a um, rectangle. So, we need to make it in the red direction, and we're just going to go, come on. Okay, let's do this. Can be a little bit hard to orientate until it lines up right here on edge with the component. And then what you can do is since this is its own component, we're going to use the pull. And that's not. Uh, oh, it is on the edge. But what you want to do is just make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We can just x-ray that whole thing wait not x-ray sorry so if you can make a glass box that is big enough that it covers the entire object and it's rotated so this turnbuckle sits right in the center and I'm not gonna do the whole thing it can take a lot of time if you change the materials of this to glass window coverings, no, not coverings, sorry. Glass and mirrors, there we go. So, translucent blue. Oops. Oh, I selected the wrong component. Component one, two, three. Okay. Can we do that? Perfect. What it's going to do is you can see how you can see your object in a glass box, and since the center lines are oriented along the red axis, you can let's get that like that. What did I rotate? Okay. Anyway, if the glass box was big enough, these would sit on the inside in here and then you could actually move these to lock against the center lines in there but it takes time and a lot of extra effort so I'm not going to go into that so what we're going to do is we're just going to delete that one Okay. so now our goal is to move these into place and do we have a specif specific depth that they need to go Da, 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 done. We do, we do. We just need, we just know that it needs to go back from the front end 0 0.40 inches from this side, which means this side will automatically be lined up. So 0 0.400. Okay, so what we're going to do is make a guide and then line it up with that. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and then I will be right back. Okay, so here's what I did. 
just made a guide from this green going in the red direction, 0 .0, no, 0 .400 inches, and then we just went up to some, I just picked an arbitrary number, it didn't need to be too high, it's just high enough. See, I still went a little too high, and I just need to bring it down. Um, so we just need to make some adjustments. I just didn't plan this very well. So what we need to do is just lower this down now. Now that I have it locked, so I have the move, I have it locked right against midpoint along this line. So that's why the corner is right, well, almost in the corner. So now it's just time to move it over until everything locks into place. It can be a little bit tricky, but guides is the only way we can do this. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it again and then be right back once it's all lined up. So go ahead and take the time to do this. Okay, so finally got it into place. And how I did it was I looked at this. I know the diameter is 0.94, so the radius from here up to here is 0.47. So I made this line go up to 0.47, which put me right at the top of this. And then I just went up 0 0.10 of an inch. And then I moved it from this center line over half an inch, which puts it right smack dab in the center. So we now have our lines where they need to be. So now what I'm going to do is hit T, and we're going to move this over 0 0.500 along the green, which we're we can now place our other one to make things easier. I'm just going to delete this one. I'm going to hit the Move tool, click, Control click right here, and move it along the line until it clicks right there. Now, is this not interesting? We've run into a problem. If we were to make a cut, it's going to get rid of everything along right here. So we've made an error. I purposely did this because I wanted to make sure that we learn from some common mistakes. So we need to find out what the error is. We need to find out if this is too big or if this isn't over far enough and it needs to be over more. And so let's take a peek. So let's look at our dimensions. So we know that the circle is a half inch radius, so a full inch diameter. So let's just double check some of these things. So T from right here to here says it's one inch or one meter in this case, but we'll shrink it down. So we know that's fine. Our length, we know our length is fine. So it means that we haven't placed our guides in the right spot. So let's take a peek. We need to be, let's see, 0.38, no, 0 0.308 divided by 2. It's 0.154. So we need to make sure that the base of that thing is 0.154 above the center of that so that our shaped thing is sitting right here. So 0.154. So let's go ahead and correct that. I will return. Okay, I went ahead and corrected it. So I made a guide from here to 0.154 out here and then from here half an inch. So let's go ahead and do the same thing on this other side. So along the green 0.154. Um, we need to erase this one. Tab from, not tab, tape measure from there, 0 0.500. Here we go, use the move tool, grab it right there, hold control, and get the little red X, click. Now if we look at it, everything's fine. So, let's make some cuts, shall we? You guys have waited this long. Let's make sure everything is a solid. I'm going to click on this one. Okay, solid component solid component, since this one's a copy of this one, I know this one's going to be a solid component. Butamis, let's see how Enroth likes this. So, that's Benjamin, I gotta remember cutting what from what, or from who from who. 
so I want trim so let's say trim this from that let's see what happens did I like it nope okay control Z control Z control Z control Z control Y okay so trim this from this see I do not know why Enroth is having such a hard time with this unless it already did it and I just didn't see it oh it did it wow it just did it really fast I'm not used to that okay so let's do it again trim this from that there we go let's hide it okay the new one is a solid look at that perfect one thing I'm going to do though is I don't know why Enroth sometimes does this but it does so if you hold control and use the eraser tool and select those it'll hide them it'll hide everything you don't want it doesn't delete them it just hides them you can also if you want a solid seamless thing we can do this one all the way across call it good come around here call that one good call that one good okay look at that our turnbuckle is almost done so let's go ahead and get rid of all our lines let's put these two back because we always need these ones okay so now the next part is just boring out don't use the word bore yeah you could use the word bore or cutting out machining milling whatever you want this section right here now this section is extremely easy all you're gonna do is the exact same thing we just did just except with one of them you can make that pill shaped thing make sure it's on the right orientation and angled correctly and put it straight through cut it and you're good so let's take a peek inside here how did we do yeah so not too bad huh well one thing I don't like what it did is it got rid of my this has never happened usually when I make the turnbuckle it doesn't get rid of this is the first time I've used Enroth on this process but it looks like Enroth has gotten rid of our cylindrical oh, what is it called not shaft whatever the hole the pipe there's a specific term for it that goes right down the center so we'll just remake that but for the most part at least it's a solid so I'm gonna go ahead and put some pause and we're gonna um, create the other shape real quick just do this one so you guys can go ahead and do that and then when we return we'll be cutting it and then starting with this next part so I will see you guys in a few minutes okay I'm back figured out what's going on there is actually a hole down the center that's a pipe I just noticed when I was clicking on random things in here look right here surface shows that it's default but if I click right here what does it show shows that it is some sort of glass so I'm just gonna click back to here and did that do it yep so it shows that it was glass instead of our regular um, pattern because when I opened up this and went to x-ray when I was on pause I could still see it and I was like man something weirds going on but it was only because of our material so I'm glad we figured that out alright so let's draw our last part here <clears throat> excuse me from center point to center point 2.485 that's excruciatingly important so is this and we know its diameter so let's go ahead and find the radius first since that's what we're going to be using so 0.515 divide that by 2 we've got 0.2575 so two methods here I'm gonna do it the easier way 
just because I can, so... Oh, everything's getting messed up. So, I'm going to make a line. Okay. We need my toolbar there. Okay, line. And the green point, 515. Oh, I didn't look at the length. Dang it. Um... Point four eight five, and that's from the center. So we need to go in point two five at least. Okay, so point two five seven five from there, and then I just forgot that stupid number. Okay, two point four eight five, then another point two five seven five, and then another. It takes me to the end, and then down and then together. So, from here, we have something that we can actually put our circles in. So here's midpoint, and we want to go back. Um, right there, 0.275, circle, midpoint, boom. And we'll just trim everything else back. Circle, boom, trim. Whoops, too far. Ah, oh, that line didn't become tangent with it. I hate when it does that. So, for some reason, our line, yep, is not tangent to that circle. So, that can be a problem. So what we need to do then is we can go ahead and just erase these ones and take a line, make sure it's right on that endpoint. Go along here until it says endpoint and it didn't fill it in. God. These circles in SketchUp are just not perfect and it drives me up a wall. So that's why sometimes it's very difficult to do it that way. So, you know what? I'm just going to start. 0.2575. Okay. From here, from the center, we need 2.485. From there, we need a 0.2575 circle. Okay, perfect. Line. We want to be in this direction along the red. We want constrained on line from point by hitting the right arrow key. Boom. Did it actually create? I think it did. So now let's do the same thing here. Okay, perfect. Apparently it's not constraining the edges. This is getting really frustrating. I don't know if this is just a program issue or what. So let's just do it this way then. If you're going to be picky, which it wants to be. Okay from the center straight down okay from the center straight up come on okay now let's try it this way there we go sometimes you just have to explicitly tell it what you want it to do there we go. Now we've got what we want. So after a long battle of playing, let's try to draw everything. We now have our shape. So it can be, it's just, I don't know, maybe that thick. Okay, so let's go ahead and get it rotated and put in place. So 
I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then we'll resume later when it's in place. So go ahead and have fun getting that positioned and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's talk about a few things first about why drawing dimensions is extremely important. And paying attention to them, especially when they've been photocopied, is extremely important. When we drew this part right here, we moved... Um, here, let's, let's get out. Let's talk about this. This is very important. I'm going to move this in the red direction, 0 0.400. Okay. Puts it right smack dab right there. Okay. Now, if I actually moved this in the red direction again, 0.5... Okay, for our radius right here. You'll notice that's where this line, if I draw a line right here, straight up. Oops, come on. Along the green. And it will actually... Okay, so if I draw that right there, and move around, you can see that's where this circle becomes tangent with this line. That's all fine and dandy, that's great. And this is where we want to place this right here. Um, this center dot right here will gonna be will be lined up right along here. But here is one problem I just discovered. Now since this is practice, it's fine, but if this was a real part we were going to machine that had to meet specific tolerances and standards, we'd be screwed. Right here. This point right here, yes, this line is 0.4 from here, but notice the radius of the circle comes out here, so this actually, this point that's 0.4 away, lies on the circle, and it creates a chord that goes across. Now, to find out exactly where this point is, right where my mouse cursor is, to this edge, you'd have to use some geometry. I mean, it's totally doable. We know from right here, out here is 0.4, and from here is 0.5. So from here to here, we just draw another chord across. We could figure out the length. Um, also, based on certain angles, we could also figure out the what they call the arc length of this or just the length of this cord, which then we can figure out how far away the arc length is from this. There's multiple ways you can do it. There's probably like four different ways. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But that is why it's important to show on drawings where everything is at. Yes, we know that this line is 0.4 away, and we drew a circle. Now in SolidWorks and Fusion 360, you just click on the circle and say, uh, make tangent to this line and also you can just trim to this circle and then you can say hey from here to specifically here's 2.49 or whatever and you only make half of it then you mirror it and then you cut it so they don't need to give you all the drawing I mean all the dimensions because SolidWorks will figure it all out but for other users in like AutoCAD or SketchUp we need all the drawings and a machinist needs all those dimensions we need to know how far from here to here at least so that we know where we can place things at but for all intents and purposes guess what we placed ours at point nine zero from here back is point nine zero so i'm gonna go ahead and let's just make a line going along the green I'm going to try to make it as long as possible without messing things up. There we go. Okay. Now our goal... It's going to be really tricky. I don't know how we're going to do this. Am I even on the surface? Yeah, because it's a curved surface. I need to somehow project a line going down. So, it's time to use some guides. Let's bring this up and over along here. Let's try to get it on that intersection point, which doesn't exist. So, 
Um, what if I just type in 0 .500? Yeah, it was a bad idea. Okay, well, we got to figure out... The reason why this is important is because this line right here is where that circle becomes tangent to these lines and it's the center point for that. So we have to find where this radii meets, I think it's going to be right there, end point of the component before it becomes a straight line. And that's where we need to place things at. So for all intents and purposes, let's assume it's right there because it's the end point of this arc. I think I'm noticing something with SketchUp. Circle points, I mean the little round dots means you're on a circle or an arc. Squares mean you're on an edge of something else. Yes. Alright, let's use some of these inferring components of SketchUp to do us some good here. Okay, circle, 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 boom. So take the tape measure and we're going to go circle, 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 right there. Okay, that right there is exactly where that radii becomes tangent to that line. So, once again I'm going to pause, let's get things aligned up. I'm just going to go ahead and do it, align things, cut call it good and then come back and if I run into any more crazy issues I will unpause the video but anyways be right back okay I'm back I got it all positioned so what I did was in our little pill box right here I made a line that goes straight to the center point of this arc then since we had this guide tangent right to there I just went ahead and moved one from this red axis straight along to the surface of right here and then place this at this point right at the intersection of it and then moved it in the top view like this uh, using the left arrow so it stays on the green and then tell it where I wanted it just so it looked even and nice so let's make sure everything needs to be solid solid component. This one is not a solid. Let's find out why. Stray edge is fixed. Internal face is fixed. So, is it a solid? Oh, it's because of that pencil mark. Yes. Yes. Okay, so Enroth. Trim this from that. Give it a few minutes. <sighs> it's got to redo everything and take its time. So, I think it did it. Let's go ahead and hide that. Oh, goodness gracious. It did it. And look, we finally, finally have, after 45 minutes of instruction, or however long this video is, we finally have our turn buckle. Look at that. Yay. So happy. Okay, alright, we're going to end the video here, and then I'm going to do part four, which is about the handle and the assembly part, and we're going to call it good. So, thank you for watching, thank you for being patient, I know it's pretty cut and dry, however, there was a lot that we learned about dimensioning and how it should be somewhat done properly, about parametric modeling, and also how to do this in SketchUp and any errors that we run into. So, thank you for watching, and have an amazing day and Christmas or holiday or whatever you guys celebrate enjoy it for the year and the new years as well so thank you and we'll see you on the flip side